Anybody who thinks the sky's the limit is, uh, is not thinking very clearly. The sky is incredibly thin. I've been above the sky. The sky is this paper thin sheath around the world and almost everything that exists lies beyond the sky. Uh, and it's only our imagination that keeps us from going there. Ignition sequence start. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. All engine running. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. 32 minutes past the hour. Liftoff on Apollo 11. Tower clear. Neil Armstrong reporting the roll and pitch program, which puts Apollo 11 on proper heading. The night of Neil Armstrong's walk on the moon, we were all over at the Monk's Cottage and uh, watched the whole thing, and Chris was just fascinated. He didn't say anything too much, but walking back to our cottage, he said later... Well, he looked up at the moon. He looked up at the moon and thought, you know, that'd be a great way to make a living. And uh, very quietly, from then on, he was, what, nine? His education was always with that in mind. Someday, maybe this would help me be an astronaut. OK, Neil, we can see you coming down the ladder now. It's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. kind of clicked in my head that, wow, if those people can do that, something that is, uh, to this point, brand new and unique in the human experience, then maybe I could do something like that. Maybe someday this little Canadian kid could fly in space. I'd like to welcome you here to the Johnson Space Center to uh, meet 24 members of our 1992 astronaut candidate class. Hi, my name is Chris Hadfield. I'm Canadian from uh, Milton, Ontario, Canada. I'm in the Canadian military. I'm a major and I'm a F-18 test pilot. Recently, I've been working on F-18 out of control testing and uh, propulsion testing for the National Aerospace Plane. And I'm uh, honored and happy to be part of this group here representing Canada today. So how do you define what was the pivotal moment, the, the watershed seminal moment that took you into that category where someone was going to say, yes, we want you to be an astronaut. For me, I chose, uh, for a farm kid growing up, I chose machinery, I chose mechanical engineering, and I chose flying. Those were things that appealed to me. So therefore, any of the watersheds that I've had have been in those areas. And probably, strangely enough, the key moment was flying an F-18 as a test pilot for the United States Navy at a huge hydrogen tank strapped to the wing of this F-18. And we had this whole test rig in the wingtip of an F-18, and we couldn't get it to work. We tried everything we could think of. We tried all different profiles. We tried different techniques. And finally, I tried something, maneuvering the airplane a certain way, holding it a certain way. I threw the switch, the igniters fired, the hydrogen flowed, and the flame lit and held on the wingtip of this F-18. And for the very first time, on a supersonic combustion ramjet engine, we had sustained flight on the wingtip of an F-18, sustained burning. And because of that, I then went on to be named the test pilot of the year by the Society of Experimental Test Pilots. I was the United States Navy's test pilot of the year. And all of those things kind of coalesced right at the moment that Canada was having its second astronaut selection. And I think when I threw that switch and that spark fired, if that engine had never lit, then my destiny may have been entirely different. It was a random event. It was one I worked towards. It was something I only could partially control, and yet it significantly helped me get to where I am today. In November 1995, Hadfield served as Mission Specialist 1 on STS-74, NASA's second space shuttle mission to rendezvous and dock with the Russian space station Mir. During the flight, the crew of the space shuttle Atlantis attached a five-ton docking module to Mir and transferred 1,000 kilograms of food, water, and scientific supplies to the cosmonauts. On that expedition, Chris operated the Canadarm in orbit, an essential tool for accomplishing their work on the Russian space station. In April 2001, Chris Hadfield served as Mission Specialist 1 on STS-100, the International Space Station Assembly Flight 6A. 
Optimal looks like a beautiful day to take the cannon arm two into orbit. We have booster ignition and liftoff of the Space Shuttle Endeavour, extending the reach of the space station while extending partnerships above the Earth. The crew of Space Shuttle Endeavour delivered and installed Canadarm2, the new robotic arm. I helped build Canadarm2 onto the space station. Our arm grabbed stuff out of the shuttle and piece by piece built the whole space station. During the STS-100 11-day flight, Chris Hadfield became one of the few astronauts to float free in space, performing two spacewalks. He spent a total of 14 hours, 54 minutes outside, traveling 10 times around the Earth. <laughs> 